Okay, this is the second part of a series on time series forecasting. And in the first part, I introduced the idea of stationary forecasting uh, using some historical data on the gold ETF. And I'm going to continue on in this video trying to find the best way to forecast gold. All right, and it should be noted that this video should not be relied on to make uh, investment decisions. So if you watch the first video, you're familiar with how to calculate and interpret moving averages. All right, so we're going to continue on with two more common methods of forecasting stationary time series. The first one is going to be weighted moving averages, and the second one is going to be single exponential smoothing. All right, and with a weighted moving average, uh, we have two things to sort of worry about. We have this look back period known as K, and then we're going to weight every observation in that look back period so that the weights add to one. All right, and then when we have higher weights on more recent data, uh, then that usually yields a more responsive forecast. So I want to jump right into the spreadsheet and get going. Okay, so I pre-calculated some of the error measures so we don't have to worry about those, all right? And then the difference here is I added this little table with some weights in there, and I just sort of arbitrarily chose a five-period look back, all right? And then the one thing we need to do is add a formula here so that eventually all our weights add to one. All right, and so in this special case where all the weights are equal, we're going to get a forecast that's identical to the, the simple moving average. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate it right here. All right, and I'm going to use the sum product formula to get a, uh, a weighted uh, average. Okay, I'll absolute reference that, and then uh, we'll get the observations in our look back period. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, if we go ahead and look at the, the data in the plain old moving average forecast, uh, we see that, okay, when we weight everything equally, uh, we get the same forecast over here. All right, so with that done, I can just go ahead and copy that down. All right, and so now we're going to see, well, how do we determine what are the best weights? So I could sort of come over here and start manually adjusting these weights, but it would take me a long time to arrive at the best weights. All right, so what I'm going to do is use uh, Excel's solver to find the optimal solution for weights. All right, so if you don't have Solver turned on, you can find it in the add-ins. All right, I'm using the Mac version here. All right, so I just go to Excel add-ins. All right, you do a similar thing in the Windows version of Excel. You turn on in add-ins. You just check off the box for Solver. All right, and then in the Data tab, you're going to get this Solver option. So I'm going to open that up. All right, so with forecasting, what we want to do is usually minimize some error measure. All right, so I'm going to select minimize. All right, and uh, while there is no one best error measure, the one that's most commonly used is the mean squared error. All right, you could, uh, right below that, you could use RMSE. You're going to get the same result. But I'm just going to minimize mean squared error, and I'm going to do that by changing these weights. All right, and then I'm going to, make it subject to the constraint that this value here, the total, has to be 1 or 100%. So I'm going to add a constraint, and then the cell reference is the cell that has the sum in there. I'm going to change this from less than or equal to to equal to, and then the value is 1. You could add the uh, non-negativity constraint, but by default, Solver makes the changing cells uh, non-negative. All right, and then, yeah, the solver that we're using, there's a few to choose from, but the solver we're using is this GRG nonlinear. All right, so with that minimal setup, we just click Solve, and once, once it finds a solution, we're just going to click OK. All right, so here's our weights, and we can see that this forecast, all right, looking at the forecast, we're pretty closely following the data, all right, and we can see that, OK, it relies very heavily on the last observation, all right? So, uh, in fact, it doesn't even include the observations that are four and five periods back. Uh, most of the forecast is coming from the data that is only uh, one and two periods in the past. Uh, we see we get a mean squared error of 203, 
and just quickly I'll compare that to what we got with the five week and the 10 week moving average. All right, and we can see that, okay, the error measure is quite a bit smaller. And so from that perspective, then we can say that it looks like the weight of moving average is a better method of forecasting gold. So it tells us that uh, one period out, uh, we can expect the price to be around uh, 122.76 uh, plus or minus uh, 143. All right, so uh, less than 1% error. Okay, I'm going to move on to uh, single exponential smoothing. All right, and single exponential smoothing, we add this idea of a smoothing constant. And the smoothing constant essentially includes some part of all previous forecasts in the forecast one period out. All right, so I've uh, written the model up here. So we're going to take the forecast and we're going to add to it the smoothing constant alpha multiplied by the actual minus the forecast. Alpha will take on a value somewhere between zero and one. All right, and since the forecasts rely on previous forecasts, we're going to have to start the model by seeding in the last observation as our first forecast. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and seed in the last observation as our forecast. All right, so for in the second cell, I will go ahead and put in the formula for single exponential smoothing. It's going to be the forecast. We're going to add to that the alpha, which I have just arbitrarily set at 0.5 right in the middle, multiplied by the difference between the observed and the forecast. All right, and then I'll just make sure that the alpha is absolute referenced here. And then we can just copy that down. Okay, so with our alpha at 0.5, it, it suggests that gold is going to be 122.99. All right, and then we can just quickly look at the error measures. All right, already they're pretty small with alpha at 0.5. All right, I just want to point out a couple of things here about alpha, though. There's two special cases, all right? The closer alpha is to zero, the more the forecast is going to rely on older data. All right, if I set it at exactly zero, all right, we're going to end up with this flat line forecast, all right, that always says that, oh, it was... Uh, it's whatever the last observed data is before we start calculating new forecasts. There's one other special case, and that's when alpha is 1. So when alpha is 1, it turns out to be what's called a naive forecast. And so we say that the forecast for the next period out is whatever it was for the last period that we have observed data in. All right, so you can see that uh, the forecast is just offset by one row. All right, and so sometimes we use that idea of a naive forecast to see if our forecasting method is any better than naive. All right, so if it's not better than naive, uh, then there's no real point in actually going through this exercise at all. All right, I'm going to reset it at 0.5. And we're going to see if we can come up with a with a better forecast than uh, than what we have here. All right. Once again, I'm going to use Solver. All right. And so this time, I'm going to again minimize the uh, mean squared error, and the changing cell is going to be alpha. Fire up Solver. Again, I will choose mean squared error. I'll minimize it. I will change alpha. All right. And then we're going to add this constraint that says that alpha's got to be less than or equal to 1. So yeah, once again, by default, uh, we're not going to let uh, alpha go below 0 because this non-negativity uh, constraint has been checked off. And so uh, with that minimal setup again, all we have to do is hit solve. Right, and we'll let the new solution take effect. And we can see that, okay, alpha was pretty close to 0.5 uh, with a, it around 0.526. And we can see that the mean squared error gets down to 188. I'm just going to compare that to the weighted moving average where it was uh, 203. It looks like then single exponential smoothing uh, is the preferred method of forecasting. All right, and so we end up with this price of, uh, or the forecast price of 122.94 uh, compared to uh, 122.76. So pretty close. 
all right but in the single exponential smoothing it's going to be 122.94 uh, plus or minus $1.37 so a little bit closer with our forecast than with weighted moving average and a lot closer than our forecast with the uh, with the simple moving average okay so I hope that helps with more stationary forecasting methods